Hey, one more thing before you go. In today's Over the Teacup Sunday episode, we'll be discussing a poignant and gripping story about a devoted daughter on a quest to uncover the truth behind her father's mysterious passing, the art of revenge and how it all comes together in a small town in New Mexico, with a little bit of suspense, political intrigue, plot twist, and more. I'm your host, Michael Hurst. I'm here with my lovely wife and co-host, Diane. Hello, everyone. Welcome to One More Thing Before You Go Over the Teacup Sunday. Hey, Diane. Hey, Michael. Long time no see. (laughs) Yeah, we've spent, what, the last five days together? Four days ago. The Friday, Saturday, Four. Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. yeah, yeah Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday. Oh, yeah. Well, Thursday. Hard. No, Thursday. Thursday. Thursday, Friday, Friday the Saturday, and Sunday. Because the holiday. Right. Right. And, and I took Friday did, off. Yeah. And what did we do? What What did we do during those four days? What did we do? We ate. We ate. We had great yeah. meals. We, yeah. um, we got to watch uh, the Master Baker Paris Next, next, the next neck. master baker. <laughs> wow, that's hard to say. Next master baker, Paris. I was even trying to say it slow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So yeah, yeah. In fact, if you don't say it, you got to be careful how you say that. They should name it something else. <laughs> I, I was just gonna say, if you say it too fast, uh, yeah, yeah, they need to it name it something else. It might not be good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. So we got to watch that. So we got to watch them and, make. Um, French pastry uh, in Paris, yeah. which it made is me very cool. hungry. Yeah. <clears throat> it inspired us. Yes, it did. And we and we watched. We almost finished the bear. We're almost finished bear one that. episode to go. You know, I, yeah. I have this theory: if you don't watch the last episode, it it's not over yet. Does it? right? Well, I think they're going to have another season anyway. I think they are anyway. Right? Yeah, but hey, okay. yeah, we don't watch the last episode. Yeah. Season three is not over yet. Season three is not over. Nope. Exactly. And then we watched a few movies. Yes, we did. And one of them is uh, the one we're going to talk about today. Next week, we'll talk about the other couple that we talked, uh, that we watched, mm-hmm. which we're mm-hmm. seeing an interesting trend in rom-coms. Yeah. But we're going to watch a couple more just to kind of uh, see if that trend is really playing out. And then we'll talk about it mm-hmm. next week. But yes. in the meantime, you, you ready for... You don't know... you. Typically, don't watch a lot of action movies with me. Mm-mm. And Most to be honest, I wasn't really in the mood to watch this one, and and so that could be partly why I feel like I do about it, um, because I have to really be in the mood to watch an action movie typically. And I really, I've been in yeah. a documentary mood today. I want to watch documentaries, and we haven't watched any, so yeah. Well, we've got a little bit of time left. We'll just yeah. Cr- Fast forward through them at half speed or something so we can just watch it really fast. <laughs> put put the words speed? on it at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, double speed. Double speed, that might work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, let's get to this one. We decided on watching okay. this because it's been in Netflix's top 10. And uh, when I first saw it, 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 it came out uh, a few days ago. Actually, more than a few days ago, some, uh, the end of November. And... What? Uh, Wait, wait, wait. The end of November? Not November. What am I thinking? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Excuse me. The end of... Boy, did I really regress. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, okay. dude. Pass some more of those gummies, <laughs> will you? <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had some. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's like, holy smokes, or the peyote or the uh, ayahuasca. <laughs> ayahuasca. Let's do some of that. What do you what do you do today? I ayahuasca. I'm not I, sure. I I ayahuasca. Ayahuasca and movies. <laughs> uh, oh God! No, okay. it was released June, yes. June, June, like twenty first. So realistically, it's been up for a little bit, but uh, you know, it's still in the top ten. Um, but it has moved down the list a little bit here. But we're going to watch it anyway. Uh, the mm-hmm. movie's trigger warning. It features an incredible cast, including Jessica Alba, Mark Weber, Anthony Michael Hall, Tone Bell, and Jake Weary. Their performances add depth and intensity to this action film, 
and it still sits in the top 10, as I said earlier. I think it's number seven or eight right now. There's Action Pack Journey. I think it went down to six when we were watching it. This Action Pack Journey is brought to life by the talented director, Muli Surya, and the brilliant writing team of John Brancato, Josh Olson, and Haley Wagner Gross. It was pitched back in 2016 as the female version of Rambo meets John Wick. Now, obviously, that's something that you don't, you're not familiar with John Wick. Well, a little bit. Look. I mean, I, I've seen, I've seen parts of the John Wick movies. I've never seen one all the way through. Well, yeah, I, I guess that's true. Yeah, you've watched a few of them, a few uh, pieces and parts of it. But I mean, yeah. you know, I'm a big, huge John Wick fan. And in, in, no. in regard to this, yeah. I, I don't. I'm sorry to Jessica Alba and the rest of the cast. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't quite see a Rambo combined with John Wick in this. I do see a badass female lead. Yeah, she was really good at what she did. I mean, I feel like all the action stuff she did was very believable to me. Absolutely. I mean, we've seen her in yeah. so many other things. I mean, Jessica Alba's not new to action films. She starred in Fantastic Four, Sin City, Machete, Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, just to name a few. We also know her as a comedic actress, a dramatic actress, and you know somebody we can really count on to entertain us. Yeah. Um, so it, it, as far as she's concerned, I think that she pulled it off pretty well. Mm -hmm. I, I really yeah. do. Um, I know that... Uh, you know, Anthony and Michael Hall, we'll talk about him in a few minutes, but Anthony and Michael Hall, we've always loved him. Yeah, yes. we just we just had a conversation kind of about him a little, you know, last last uh, time we talked about Bratz. Because mm -hmm. he's been around yeah, for... That, that we talked about how he wasn't in Bratz, how he declined to be in Bratz, but yeah. he was in the Bratz movie, the Brat Pack movies. The, the Brat Pack movies, like uh, 16 Candles, yeah. Weird Science, uh, The Breakfast Club. Uh, from those mm -hmm. arenas, and where those are all comedy, uh, brilliant comedies actually, and yes, and you know, yes. coming of age type thing. Um, he moved from there into D the Dead Zone, which we loved that series, The Dead Zone, Love not that. the movies, yeah. but the series. He was in the series. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Christopher Walken was actually in the movies, mm -hmm. uh, and more recently, The Goldbergs, where he also was. A, yes. he went back to a little bit of a comedy portion when he was in The Goldbergs. I I loved his character on that. That was yeah. great. Here he plays. I love anything guy. with Anthony Michael Hall. I mean, that was that was one of the things about this movie for me. Anyway, was there wasn't enough of him. Uh, yeah, I think it would it come up a short now. I mean, obviously there are some things that we found out uh, in the meantime. You know, filming filming wrapped up in 2021. They shot it at the end of 2021 in October and November. So it it still was at kind of the height of um, COVID. Yeah. You know, the whole you know two years of COVID, right. it was at near the end of that. So when you look at this, the, the cast and the crew uh, are very minimal. What you see is minimal mm -hmm. cast. You know, you see an army base, but there's hardly anybody on the army base. Yeah. And you see strategic shots of, of uh, you know, personnel walking around the base, for example. But you don't see what you would normally see on an army base type right. thing. Same thing and with I the, guess... I, I would guess that because it was pitched back in 2016 and, you know, it had already been a while, maybe they just thought, if we don't do it now, we're never going to do it. And uh, they yeah. had to do it. Yeah, I would say so. Because it, you know, it, realistically, it, it, because it was shot um, in, in 2021, it sat on the shelves for a little while. And then, then it was put into editing. And then it finally got released almost two years after being finished. Um, a mm -hmm. little history behind it. Thunder Road Films bought the spec in 2016, as you just said. Uh, Basil Iwanek, who is the producer of John Wick Films, which is why I thought, hey, it's going to be pretty good because mm -hmm. anybody that's a John Wick film fan, you would think that this is like, okay, this is a kind of a kick-ass movie, which, again, kudos to Jessica Alba because she really did mm -hmm. an outstanding job in that arena. Mm -hmm. uh, and she Erica did. Lee both attached to produce the film. And then uh, in May of 2020, Netflix got involved in the project. Then Jessica Alba was mm -hmm. cast to star in the film based upon her previous history with 
um, those uh, her action sequences and, and superhero mm-hmm. stuff type. And uh, she was also one of the producers on it as well. So, you know, from it, I think that they were expecting a lot more um, in regard to it. But I think, and, and I'm only speculating on this. This is not necessarily fact. And this is not something that, you know, I, I found any place in some of the writings uh, that have the reviews and things that people are writing up on this. But I do think that um, uh, shooting it during COVID probably had a, a negative effect on everything about it. Yeah, I could you know see what, that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That, because number one, yeah. you know, we uh, look, Caitlin, uh, our oldest is, a, um, is an actor. Uh, and we've talked about her before on the show. And, you know, during that time period, during COVID, she did a few projects during that time period. And boy, the, the protocols were just so tight. Remember, she had to, they, they brought everybody in. They brought them, they bust them to a hotel. They had to immediately go to their rooms. And then they, had to, they got a note slipped under the door to say, come downstairs. You know, I say they, everybody. And Cord, Cord, right. her husband Cord was also a part of this. And, and they didn't got, they get, they didn't even get to stay in the same room together. They didn't get to stay in the same room. They're married. They were they were sequestered. Sequestered. They from were each married. Other. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, they got notes slipped under the door and said, you need to come downstairs. Downstairs, they were in a line, uh, six feet apart, you know, until they got up and did a COVID test. And then they immediately mm-hmm. went back up to their rooms. And then the dinner was brought to their rooms. And then they uh, the next morning, they were called down to their, as long as they passed COVID tests, which they did. Right. Then they were right. called down to the scene. And then once they did their scene, then they were put back up into the room and then Mm -hmm. called down again later that evening to do another COVID test. And then same thing for the next day. It it was crazy. And then everybody was bussed back to um, an origin point where Mm -hmm. they were able to get in their cars and go home. And in fact, if I remember right, um, they sent cars to pick each one of them up and they couldn't even ride in the cars together. Um, that's what, what I, I don't. Me. I don't remember for sure, but I mean that would make sense if they su- yeah. sequestered them from the rooms too. I, I, mean, I, I, I seem to remember yeah. that uh, Caitlin said that was bizarre. They had two cars show up. One one Caitlin had to go into, and one Cord had to go into. So wow. you know, and, and so the there, rest- there there was a lot to do with filming anything during COVID. Yeah, there, was there was a, a lot. lot. So so and. and yeah. So from that perspective, I would say that, you know, obviously they were working with that or trying to work mm-hmm. with that. So the cast was limited. I'm sure production crew was limited and everything was limited with in regard to it. Yeah. You know, overall, you know, if people on IMDb were giving it like a, an average of five star rating. So I've seen a lot of other movies. Five that, out of what? Five out of ten. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. You don't look at IMDb okay. do that much. Uh, no, five out of I ten, don't. Okay. Five out of ten stars. Oh, okay. And there's okay. a lot. Yeah, that. That makes sense. Yeah, there's a lot of other movies that get five out of ten. There's a lot of other, and, and I enjoyed them. This isn't an yeah. Oscar winner. It's not even an Oscar contender. And it's not meant to be an Oscar winner or an Oscar contender. You know what I mean? It's not you meant know, to do you know, that. After we finished it, I was thinking, for me, it would have been the perfect movie for you to be watching and me in the same room while I'm playing a game on my iPad and having it on this background. <laughs> That would have been great. I would have been mm. fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it wasn't the worst movie I've ever seen. No, it, really wasn't. it, it wasn't the worst, worst movie. I would say that, you know, mm-hmm. the, 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 I think the most interesting part of the movie was actually Jessica Alba. And yeah. obviously the storyline's kind of unique because typically what we see is um, a father or a mother, like as in Jennifer Garner and like Peppermint, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. The where the mother gets mad, the father gets gets pissed because there's some member of their kids, and they right. they go on a revenge binge right. to to mm-hmm. find out who who did this. Well, in this particular case, it's a it's a woman, so she got a lead character. She mm-hmm. kicks ass and takes names, and mm-hmm. you know it 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 is it it's a, from that perspective. I think it's refreshing. Because what you mm-hmm. have is a daughter taking revenge on, on, you know, seeking revenge. Uh, I don't, uh, don't want to give it avenge, away. Avenging, avenging, avenging her father. Avenging her father. Avenging her father's death. Right. Yeah. So, 
you know, from from that perspective, I, I did enjoy it from that perspective. I think that, that mm-hmm. now Anthony Michael Hall, I'm not used to seeing him as a villain. Most 90% of what I've seen him in, what you've seen him in, he's he's mm-hmm. a good guy in one form or another, he's even a, in Dead Zone. I'll tell you, though, he's a good villain. I, I actually wanted to see more of him as the villain because, I mean, I got I got the gist of it, but I just love him so much. I think, it, I don't know. I mean... I just feel like they could have done so much more with that character, you know. He wasn't and, in it as and much use as he and, have been. and use him. I mean, he's yeah. Anthony Michael Hall, Ugh, yeah. you know. But. And he's a far cry from the skinny kid of Sixteen Candles and uh, Weird Science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, just, you know, I love him. I will say, I, I will say that. But yeah, I mean, look, we've got to respect the individual. He's really become a. Mm-hmm. He's made a name for himself, and he's done it well. And you know, ob- yeah. obviously, he politely declined to participate in the Bratz documentary. Um, mm-hmm. But so did a, a couple other people. So in yeah. regard to that, they felt that that was something that's in the past and they're done done with that chapter in their life. They yeah. didn't want to continue with it. And I respect that. And nothing so, wrong with that. No. Yeah. And, you know, in this, there, there were obviously, I think when you look, when you look at the end of this particular film, I think that a little bit of it was rushed. There were some holes in it. Mm-hmm. And the mm-hmm. holes could have been due to production restrictions, or the holes in the mm-hmm. film could have been to bad writing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of feeling like the writing um, didn't have great character development for a number of the characters. And in the very beginning, it was very disjointed for me. Like, yeah. okay, who, who is this person? Who are they to her? Like. And, and it was very, it, it ends up being a very general reason that like you were saying to me during the movie when we'd stop it and go, okay, what? what? Who is this person? I had to and, back it up. And it, yeah. it, it, it kind of gets explained a little bit. You kind of have to un- understand it on a, on a general platform of, they let's just say so it's a small town. With it. It, you know, it's and, a small and, town yeah. and that's, yeah. So yeah, anyway. The whole thing it, is, is, the um, the writing team, John Bricado and Josh Olson, are the ones that actually pitched the original project in 2016. Mm-hmm. And then Haley Weigrin Gross was brought in, and she was brought in after she had won a couple of awards for something else she had written, but they weren't Oscars, okay? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But she had been. They she were. Won, they they won Oscars, or they did no, not? No, they were not Oscars. They were Haley not Weigrin Oscars. Gross was brought in to rewrite it. Okay. She had won some things. Prior to that person, I think a TV show. Um, okay. So they brought her in to rewrite it. I don't think mm-hmm. she really, you know, I haven't seen the original script. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, if people say, well, what the hell do you know about script writing? I ran a screenwriting conference for almost five years and we did it in Las Vegas and we brought, you know, 30 to 40 industry professionals from, from Hollywood, um, screenwriters and producers and casting agents uh, to teach people how to write screenplays and to pitch yeah. them. And you wrote, uh, you wrote some. And I've written screenplays myself. So mm-hmm. I'm not just armchair quarterbacking. You know, I understand right. the business of screenwriting. I understand the process of screenwriting and what, mm-hmm. what it takes to do it. I mean, we, we, I know, um, uh, uh, I, I had wine with uh, Shane Black from Lethal Weapon and the guy that wrote, mm-hmm. uh, all the Rush Hour movies with uh, Jackie Chan in the American Pie movies, you know, all these uh, legendary, the guy that won the Oscar for Witness, you know, these, yeah. you know, these kind of individuals. I learned um, from the best, number one. Mm-hmm. Friends with these people, yeah. you know, and some of these producers and, and so forth, I'm still friends with. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's not just armchair quarterback. And I think she did not do it justice. I think she did, she didn't fill in the holes. And uh, I if, think, well, if the holes were there when she got the script, we don't know. Yeah, well, my yeah, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. She <laughs> so, she could have she could have you know, created the holes, or she could have just missed filling some holes in, I guess, or both. I don't know. Yeah, you know who knows? I, I mean, mean, it's hard to know. John Marcato and Josh Olson were brand new writers at the time, so they probably had a you know a script that went, yeah, it's a really good idea. You have female, and then the guy from. Um, uh, Basil Iwanok, who produced the John Wick films, probably went, oh, yeah, I'd like that. You know, mm-hmm. the female version of Rambo and John Wick, come, you know, kind of a thing. That sounds like so a really they, kick-ass they probably movie. had a really, they probably had a really good pitch. 
Yeah. I mean, for him to get involved in it, right? The pitch was probably awesome. I would say, um, yeah, I would say so. I, you know, I, it, like, again, it was not the worst movie. And I respect, look, I've never written anything. So I, I'm not, I, I don't mean to armchair quarterback. I'm just, I know what I like in a movie. And I'm, you know, I prefaced it with, I'm not an action film. That's not like my thing normally. So well, take, as take a, my opinion for what it's worth. <laughs> I, as an action film aficionado, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's one of those things that, like I say, I enjoyed portions of it. And I think that, you know, mm -hmm. if you're just sitting around and you're trying to find something to watch, it, it's okay thing to watch. I, I wouldn't yeah. discount it. I wouldn't say that, hey, just this movie absolutely 100% sucked. Right. Because Don't I've, ever we've watch seen it. Yeah. movies where I have literally watched the first 20 minutes of it and just shut mm -hmm. it off. I, I, you know, usually, usually screenplays are supposed to catch you. Movies are supposed to catch you. You all know this when you watch a movie or a TV show. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't catch you in the first four minutes of that movie, you are not going to sit through it or you're not going to. Sometimes we give it five, you know, five, six, maybe 10 minutes. But if you don't, if you don't have any interest in that first 10 minutes of the movie, you say screw it and you shut it off or you find something else. I can yeah. count this. I can barely count on both. I can't, in fact, I can't count them on both my hands of the times that I have gone through trying to find something to watch, start watching it, get about four minutes in and go, no. And that actually happened recently with a movie starring a very big star and it was <clears throat> shocking, shocking, but we won't talk about that. But um, it, yeah, it was pretty bad. This was not that. This was, this caught my interest enough to keep it on. I mean, it, it wasn't like that. It wasn't that bad. It just, there were, there were some, there were a lot of holes. Yeah, there was, so much more with it. So much more with yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. You know, yes. Yes. And I suck. So we don't want to give too much away because obviously that is, no. that's not our purpose to give anything away. You have to make your own decision when you go to watch this movie. I think it's worth a watch. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would mm -hmm. count on it being the, um, the uh, grab the popcorn, you know, and your sweetheart or your significant other uh, or your date and sit down and kind of really take in a movie night. I think it's something you mm -hmm. can check out. And if you're just hanging out, <laughs> you know, like uh, you yeah. said, I'll watch it while you're on your game, playing your game. Yeah. Kind yeah. of a thing. I would do that is what I would do. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and, you know, the other characters... I think you know the the Mark Weber and Tone Bell and Jake Weber all were. Um, I think they played their parts pretty well, actually, especially the. Well, go ahead. I say especially uh, Mark Weber. Is um, he's he's a he's the bad guy, and I think he he played it pretty well, actually. He was okay, so he was the bad brother. Yes. No, no, Mark Weber was I don't know, Mark Weber played the deputy sheriff. Okay. okay. We have we have a difference of opinion there then. Yeah, I, I think he, yeah, he's still he's I think he did okay. Okay. And then uh Tone uh Jake Weary. Jake Weary uh plays Elvis. His name. He doesn't play Elvis as in oh, thank you, thank you very much. Elvis has left the no. building. Elvis. Not that kind of Elvis. You know, nope. uh, um, teddy bear. I'm going to be your teddy bear. Yeah. Not that, not that Elvis. But and why they named it Elvis? Yeah, anyway, I didn't like that. Here's the thing. <laughs> yes, you get to you get to want to hate this guy. So he played his part pretty yes. well too. Because I, 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 yeah, I would say he did. He did a good job with his character for sure. Yeah, and yeah. then Tone Bell. Uh, he's a good guy, so you'll see that when was you was that it. was that her partner? Yes, Spider. Okay, yes, Spider. Can I just say I loved him, and he he was definitely not in the movie enough. No, I he loved be him. In the movie more. Yeah, I loved him from the very get go. He's in the very beginning, and I was yeah. like, oh, this is gonna be great. I love him, and he wasn't in it enough. So well, and yeah, and when you when you see the opening, the opening is kind of interesting. It kind of it is. It, it catches your attention to it, but I think it doesn't explain enough. And there was a huge hole <laughs> in the beginning. Huge hole. Yeah, so, I won't. I won't talk yeah. about it later. But nope, anyway. that's all we're gonna say because we but, don't want to give it away. We'll see if anybody else catches it. We want okay. you to see it. If you, if you, if you look, if anybody out there, if you differ with our opinion when you watch it, and you, yeah. 
is that you just email me, Michael at one more thing before you go.com. It's very simple. Michael, M I C H A E L at one more thing before you go.com. And let me know what you think about it. If you, you know, you want to differ with it, you want to come back on and talk on your side of it, let me know. Yeah. And we'll have yeah. a discussion. Or if any other movies that you think that we, or TV shows that you feel that we didn't, that we missed that require a, a look from us where we can mm-hmm. come on and we can talk about it, we'll bring you on and we'll talk about it. Yep. It'll kind of be that. a movie threesome. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Okay. Uh, so, right. I would say what what uh, what. Any last words about the movie? What's your recommendation? I give mine. What's yours? Um, I would say watch it if you don't really have. If you're just kind of searching for something to watch and feel kind of in an action mood, sure, watch it. Okay. This is one more thing before we go. So before we go, do you have any, any, um, I always national forget day. this. You I, always forget this. I always forget this. The national, national day calendar.com. The, the national I look day calendar dot com. And they are not a sponsor. They're not we, a sponsor. We would love for them to sponsor if they wanted to. I'm but, just they, saying. but they're not a sponsor. But they're not a sponsor. Um, kind of interesting. So national koi day, as in the fish. The koi fish. They would be, no, they, koi koi's would probably not survive in Arizona at the moment. No, we're barely surviving in Arizona at the moment. Um, National Day of Rock and Roll. Speaking of Elvis. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, that old no, time rock no and response. Roll. That old time of rock and roll. Yeah. Sure. Um, I don't really know what that means, National Day of Rock and Roll. Let's see. That means we should be out rocking instead of, you know, sleeping. It's time to put on your, <laughs> it, they say it's time to put on your dancing shoes and dance the day away. Um, begins in the late 19, you know what? There's things that are really cool. It's cool inventions called glasses. Oh, I, I just took mine off. Oh, oh, look at that. Words. There are words. This history of rock and roll begins in the late 1930s from African-American music containing com- combinations of jazz, rhythm, and blues, gospel, and country music. Oh, I by, the 1940- by the 1940s, instruments like the saxophone and piano were added to the sound, intensifying the appeal. It wasn't until the 1950s that rock and roll hit the mainstream music scene, causing a social s- shift in society. So there you go. Um, so get up, put your dancing shoes on, and rock it, baby. And I suppose you could put rock and roll on the jukebox at your favorite dive bar because it's National Dive Bar Day. <laughs> Woohoo! And then you could order yourself some macaroni and cheese at your local dive bar. I what guess. I want to know. know is why these people, who sits around and thinks, let's make this a national day. Well, here, National Dive Bar Day, founded in 2018 by National Day Calendar and Seagram's Seven Crown. Of so course, it's a sponsor. Yes, yes. Sponsor. Sponsor um, national, said, it's it's National Macaroni Day, so that's why I said order macaroni and cheese. If sponsored by a favorite dive bar. Actually, it doesn't say it has a sponsor. Um, and then you can finish it up with a Strawberry Sunday. I don't know if they even have those at dive bars, but National Strawberry Sunday Day. Um, and then National Father Daughter Take a Walk Day. Aww. I'll save that for when it's cooler. Yeah, don't do it now. Please don't do it now, especially if okay. you're in Arizona. Well, okay. l- time to go. Yes. One more thing before you all go. Thank you very much for being a part of One More Thing Before You Go family. We really appreciate each and every one of you joining us each week. And we look forward to continuing this journey with you. Um, we'll be back to our regular episodes on every Wednesday. We've got some great guests that are coming up. And again, you'll notice that we are making subtle changes as we progress throughout the end of the year. And by this fall, you'll see full implementation of some of those changes. We're hoping that you're enjoying them and that they will benefit you in such a way that you will still walk away with more inspiration, motivation, and some education in this kind of a thing. So... Thank you very much for staying with us. Please make sure that you uh, share with others, share with your friends, like, subscribe, and we hope that you have a wonderful 
absolutely wonderful week this week. So one more thing before you all go, have a great day, have a great week, and thanks for joining us. See ya. Thanks for listening to this episode of One More Thing Before You Go. Check out our website at beforeyougopodcast.com. You can find us as well as subscribe to the program and rate us on your favorite podcast listening platform.